by way of Shema, all the word gifts. You're familiar with that, right? Shema, all the word gifts. That's the name of our store, and of course it has a beautiful significance that um, Shemok Olawa is a word in Zuni, it stands for water spirits. Ah, water spirits. So my name is Andrew Thomas, and I'm from the great Navajo Nation. Of course I'll be talking about pottery, but not Andrew's pottery, right? <laughs> Only one got it. Andrew's pottery? Uh, the store? Yep. Yep. Okay. Later, <laughs> eh? We got it. Good enough. And of course, uh, we're actually very privileged. This is an ongoing, um, where we actually teach and also learn about our native ways and culture, and primarily with our beautiful pottery, which is probably the oldest of any, next to the, the art of basketry. Uh, yeah, at, eh. yeah, at, eh. Oh, wow. You guys are doing very well. How about yate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What the hey? <laughs> wow, you guys are doing extremely well. Uh, a popular word for greeting is also in the Karis <coughs> word is Kuwati. Go ahead, Kuwati. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for being here. And you can also visit us on shemakolowa.com of what we're doing in our, in our daily lives as far as enriching our way of seeing things through our art, our way of living, and also to perpetuate Pueblo culture. Even though I'm not Pueblo, but a wide admiration instills me to learn a lot about Pueblo pottery. When I started out, uh, I've been at the Cultural Center for collectively 23 years. And I've been exposed to Pueblo pottery and native art for even longer than that. My credibility goes back to a gentleman named of Martin Link from the Gallup area. He's an anth or archaeologist, along with Barton Wright, another individual that, uh, that got to know took a lot of numerous trips to Hopi, knew a lot about Katsinas, Katsinas, right? Mm -hmm. Kachinas. Yeah. And makes me appreciate what I, what I have in our surroundings, right? as, as like I'm a Pueblo. I'm going to speak for, not for on behalf, but like a Pueblo. How they interpret the meanings uh, and the facts of life in and, and true form. But today we have, of course, a range of all the uh, not all 19 Pueblos, but we come darn close uh, as far as having uh, you know, pottery, uh, part of our gift shop, and of course a lot of them are actually are for sale, and we do have a box for it as well, so it will travel very well. <laughs> so, you know, realistically, you know, the oldest craft is probably basketry. Basketry, you can be mobile with basketry. Meaning you haven't even settled yet. As you travel through the hunters and gathering, where you look for the finest land to provide nourishment, food, and such. As before the contact of con conquistadors, of course, um, 1500, depending on who you talk to, uh, there's even more villages than what we have in 19 pueblos. Uh, some speculate 66 to 68 villages. After the contact, of course, um, through warfare, diseases and such, internal conflicts, um, it diminished to what we have now is 19 pueblos. But at the meantime, you know, a lot of them were actually as one, but they divided as well, as in terms of migration, different migration. So. Having said that, you know, we have earlier culture have done Pueblo pottery, or just a pottery itself, through the Hoko Kem. Huh? Hoko Kem? The Magyawans? As, you know, later on at Membres. And, of course, the Anna Saza. 
or also known as Anasazi. Uh, a little clarification here that um, a lot, I know a lot of the Pueblo are up, up in arms about the word Anasazi. Anasazi doesn't really mean enemy ancient ones. It's the remaining burial of the enemy ancient one, meaning that we're not telling the Pueblo people that they're ancient or enemies, for that matter. We're actually talking about what they left behind. Their ruins, uh, grave sites, things that they left behind. <coughs> Pottery shards, matate, mano. Uh, for us, as Navajo, we're prohibited to walk, to gather, and to seek. So in turn, we are to be inflicted, if, if that's the word. Um, in our natural order, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So something that's been left behind, we're prohibited to walk on. And we're afraid that there, there's some sort of a, a spirity of the ancient ones that were inflicted on our minds, that this is a no-no. And of course, a lot of the archaeologists have, have followed with Navajos with all these sites, and then known as today Anasazi, the enemy ancient ones. But that's just coming from me. Um, you know, we're, we're in a form of to be educated and to learn. So hopefully the, today's presentation, we're all able to learn, to educate. And everyday process is a learning process. And of course, I don't know everything. And by that, it's also a learning process for me. So as we, as we develop, you know, a lot of the earlier pottery, as we transition from basketry to pottery, obviously our lifestyle have changed. We're a little more not as mobile. We're not as hunters and gatherers. We're obviously a lot of the membrous pottery that you see are all based on animals. Fish, deer and such, antelope, so therefore, there were more hunters, and usually the men were hunters, right? So that usually means that the hunter is also a potter of the black and white. So as we change position, the, the contact, a lot of the Pueblos, of course, are diminished by what is now we have 19 Pueblos. What comes to mind automatically in our Pueblo pottery, or the world pottery, is Akama. Akome, right? Akome. Simple means the people of the white rock. Nothing fancy. So within that region, they had a huge deposit of kaolin, all those wonderful things that you actually have within those regions has to be worked with. That also includes uh, mountain beeweed, has different names, wild spinach, of that nature. So when you think of, of, of Pueblo pottery, more so with Akama, you seek that pu um, Pueblo polychrome. And it's just a fancy word meaning there's more than one color. But within, the, within that same instance, Akama used pottery as for function, as functional. From a midwife to bring in this child, in olden days, when a child comes in, they get a Pueblo pottery with spring water or clean water to bathe the new addition. Do always. So a lot of the older pattern though, usually had some sort of formality of uh, fertility pot. Uh, I don't see it as much anymore. Uh, the design <coughs> is very distinctive. But um, I, and then again, uh, th the things have changed from what is very simplistic from the membrous and then there's the transformation, and then now to the uh, Akama Pueblo pottery. But we often have seek 
that you know is a lot of the symbolism can be used as a design. But a lot of the symbols are not. Uh, rather, I'm sorry. A lot of design <coughs> are not symbols. That's probably the most crucial of anything. That as we progress with probably the railroad, you know, the the eastern invasion, another invasion, people are coming to buy souvenir. And what is very simplistic, we're changing our design. We're modifying our symbolism. The great Lucy Lewis from Acoma Pueblo used very simple design. Some of them are actually a design which are symbolic of the old members. As younger potters get a hold of it, we think to ourselves, we have to sell this, put food on the table. Our designs would get a lot more intricate. So the romanticizing comes into play. The common questions will be, what does it mean? That's the most common question. What does it mean? Does it mean anything? I had a dream. What does that mean? I don't know. It's just a dream. So by that romanticizing, we, we answer our counterpart the basic of Pueblo pottery. Certain formalities that you see starts with who we are as Pueblo people. From the top, we will seek sky cord, is that little rim that you see above, which you'll see it often on most Pueblo pottery, the sky cord. Why is this so important about the sky cord? As spiritual people, primarily the Pueblos, <coughs> as we're migrators, we often ask, okay, I'm going to be not a hunter anymore, so I'm going to shy away from the, the deer, the <coughs> fish, and, and the elk design, and now I'm a farmer. The emphasis will be on corn, squash, and beans, melons. So depending on who you are, as far as you're a spiritual man, the design would be different from a potter that's also a, a, a midwife, from a pot that's also a, 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 a planter, fields and such. So by that, the directional is very important, but it also plays an important role of making pots. The majority of the pots are actually horizontal coiled, very standard, even today it's very standard. Horizontal, horizontal coil method, depending on the Pueblo, one will be, have thick walls and one will have thinner walls. The thinner walls will emphasize more on 75 to 90 percent base clay, and then the rest is temper. Temper meaning adding to the clay to make it stronger. <coughs> so obviously, Akama will use thin walls, less temper. As you go down further down, there'll be more thicker walls, more temper. And then again, that means adding to the clay. So the symbolism is very simple. The polychrome, of course, is actually very standard with the, the, the indention on the bottom, which if it was functional, it would usually be a little larger with the high shoulder, restricted form, 
And if I was actually to carry a supply, and I say supply, whether it's the ear of corn, the kernels, <laughs> think of that nature, the beans, I put it on my head, this will fit just right on the surface of my head. The high shoulder is to cup my, my hands so that I can actually carry this without any no indentation. The thin wall also adds to the weight. The thinner the wall, the lesser the weight, the more inventory. So we talked about the, uh, the rim. In most cases, not all the time, in polychrome, black and white, sometimes orange to red, depending on what type of orchard you're using, as far as vegetal or mineral paint. We ask the heavens, the spirits of the heavens, that we communicate and mediate with the upper gods to bring rain. So we have all these beautiful offerings through songs, dance, and prayer. It's usually a mutual exchange. So what we'll represent most of the time is the cloud pattern. Cloud pattern can come in many forms, depending on how you see it. Uh, in most cases, it'll be a digital form. So what, what I tell you here is, that is this a cloud pattern? What does that represent? You can raise it up so people can see in the map, raise the fire answer. Thank you. There we go. Okay. So, what we represent here is, and then again, the formality that we're asking for prayers, for moisture, and use mediation through songs, dances, and using animal as also to mediate and also to communicate with the upper gods to bring rain. So the vast design symbolism is reflecting on rain. Living in a semi-dry arid land, it's a huge factor. Very, very huge. So rather than romanticizing about the design, which it doesn't have to mean anything. It doesn't. We get it all the time. What does this mean? Often. They even challenged my name, so how come you have an English name? <laughs> uh, you know, like, uh, you know, I work here, and my Indian name will be Andrew Stands Around. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a name? <laughs> and we still, we still hunt buffaloes. Those kind of questions. Same so do. Next time, try buffalo wings. <laughs> So back to this beautiful pottery. So we actually identified the upper echelon, the spirits, the cloud carrier, the cloud takers, the spirits that we indulge on to pray to, to bring in moisture. So as I'm a, a spiritual man, my design will differ from a farmer. So by that, you see a lot of lines. Lines, geometric pattern, which is also very, very common. <coughs> so through the heavens, we have to divide our quadrant, believing that there's east, south, west, and north. Our pottery will reflect on that. I'm sure you can see it. Okay, there's my first line. Flip it over, that's my second line. East to west. Here's the other line from the north to the south. You see that? Now that takes care of our, the quadrant of how we believe that we live in quarters. So as a farmer, we have to recognize one is the solstice. Very, very important as a farmer. I have to prepare my fields. 
So for, for preparing a field, we're proposing germination and pollination. Extremely important. So some way I have to embed those kind of a thinking stories, if you will, onto my pottery. Last time when I planted this way, I seen a lot of rain. Up in the mountains, which will be, the, there's a little mountain range here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Rain falling down on it, to me, that's an abundant. Then again, being as a farmer, that is a really good sign. Everything that we've fulfilled on, on part of the, uh, our way of life has been fulfilled. Walking the right path as a farmer, you know, with the plantings, because you just can't go out there and plant, because we're, and then again, we live in a semi-dry, arid land. We take the challenge of planting in a semi-dry, arid land, we know a lot about dry farming. How to be preservative, preserving, saving, and indulging through songs and prayers. So we, we introduce our four directions. It also has an advantage as a potter, where you paint the first quarter with all these beautiful geometric design, including your plantation, whatever you are planting. <coughs> Most common will be the ear of corn, the staff of life to the pueblos. They can do so much with that corn that becomes the facts of life rather than the staff of life. There'll be some sort of like a leaf of it, the husk, or is it other forms of, of, of flowers? <coughs> so it interchanges. It doesn't mean one thing, it means other things. So if you ask five different farmers about this particular design, you're going to get five different answers. What does it mean? Well, we can try our best to, to look at this particular design and probably tell you that it's uh, either an ear of corn or the husk. As I tipped it over, and then again, there's your little mountain range, black and white. Black and white usually is often done throughout to represent the balance of man and woman. In most cases, when we develop this design, it's been often repeated. So we're actually walking with the pot itself through the journey of life. As we come in, the first quarter will be sort of like an infant. The second quarter will be more of an adolescent stage. The third quarter will be more of a parenting stage. And then finally, the last <laughs> quarter, obviously, will be in our, in our wiser stage, where we're an older, elderly person. So by that, we also have one of the most com uh, shared design is that your earth, your earth cord is down at the bottom. And the in-between is us. Us meaning people, the wingets, the four-leggeds, the amphibians, all of them represent germination. And pollination. So now, as a hunter, okay, as a hunter, I'll say, I'm going to actually just use certain design, we'll fit it in there, but it will be different on others. So Akama will do a lot of the high shouldered, and of course, um, then often change as much over the years. A lot of the pueblos have. So I'm going to from, go from there to Cochiti. Cochiti are relatively known for uh, storytelling, and Helen Cordero comes to mind automatically. 
but they also have a uh, pottery tradition that modified itself because of the in disposition of warfare and such, which at one time, Kochiti was part of San Felipe. <laughs> There's a little division. But Kochiti went a little higher for defensive reason because of the, you know, we did the, um, the Pueblo revolt and a lot of a lot of tradition have diminished based on, on which way we went, which way we go. And, and by that, the tradition is that when they built that dam in Cochiti, they covered a lot of clay that they used. A lot of mineral and vegetal paint. So their design and pottery kind of diminished a little bit. But their firing method is also different from what is Akama. This type of bowl can be used as a ceremonial bowl. During their feast time, they put <coughs> pasole uh, to, to feed the gods. And what it's, and then again, well, they say, oh, they made a mistake. There's a little line. They didn't complete the whole line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that particular line is actually a ceremonial break. Ceremonial break faces towards the east to represent cleansing, purity, and renewal. So if I was going to face it, I'm going to face this way. As a marker, and then again, your four direction, which is going to entail this side and this side to this side. See, it started to repeat itself. So as native people, four directions are very, very important. Because we know about the solstice, the rotation of the moon, the sun. And then again, as a farmer, hunter, Gatherer, it's all very important to, to tell time. Even the stars, the, the constellation of stars. So Kochiti, uh, you know, they're more noted for their storytelling, but they still have that base black and gray, which they don't really stone polish their wear as much. From there, then we get into heinous. We know about Hamish, right? Hamish. Mm -hmm. Hamish is probably the appropriate word, but as Spanish came in, changed that H into a J. Hamish. And with Hamish, Walatoa, you heard of Walatoa? Yeah. Yeah. Hamish just simply means the people. And Walatoa is the, um, the village in the canyon, or canyon in the village, or something like that. Too. But they live in a beautiful village where there's a lot of actually a combination of Pecos. Are you familiar with Pecos? <coughs> the village that's, is the oldest, but they actually came together, and then again, through the Pueblo Revolt, changed a lot of things. To this day, they don't use a lot of you know, like particular <coughs> style, but it's anybody's style. But then again, same standard. Your, your sky cord, us in the middle, and then your earth cord at the bottom. Still the same horizontal coil method. And the same reflection is that, is this design, what does this mean? Is it a dagger? In some case, dagger could be for an authoritative person, or is it a serpent? Or is it a rain parrot? <coughs> So it becomes a nomenclature again. If you ask three different people, you get three different answers. But the reflection is that if it's the rain parrot, rain parrot <coughs> came to be a long time ago. And we use it as to mediate with the upper gods. Um, the parrot spoke, so we use it to, to mediate with the upper gods. So in return, the reflection is that we want it to be painted onto the pot. So the stay, it's very standard. 
The geometric pattern that we saw here is actually often repeated, and sometimes there's actually a line coming down, <coughs> going back to abundance. Rain is a huge paramount, and we live around rain. But then again, the Pueblos, they know how to work with dry farming, so anything that comes in portels, they can actually work around it. Then from, to, from Hemish to Isleta, Isleta, they usually work with a lot of white, with Akama, Isleta, Laguna, and Zuni. But then again, that huge deposit, they share a lot of commonality with the white. This is just a beautiful example of your, your terrace. And then again, going back, what does that mean? Does it mean cloud pattern? Or does it mean kiva steps? Does it interchange? Can we put it upside down? If it's black and it's white, is it male, is it female? All of the above. Very, very important. Whereas with this particular piece, and then again, four directions. It's often repeated. With this cloud, we actually sort of like um, it's protruding out a little bit. It's in relief. <coughs> Clouds bring moisture. Moisture brings prosperity because we plant it. And then when we receive water, it all stands for growth. From there, we got Nambe. Nambe, in this particular piece, it's actually a, a feathered rim. And then as uh, Pueblo being very spiritual, feathers can be used to mediate with the gods, used as an offering as well, and in return to bring rain. If you live in a similar dry, arid land, very, very important. So this is a feather them all the way through. And feathered actually has a geometric pattern here, which the white will represent the, the female. And if you cut a little imaginary line, the black portion will be actually male. So we divide that where we have male rain, which is a little harsh, and then female rain will be something that's very gentle. <laughs> Same thing with the wind. Male wind will be a little harsh, Female way, maybe something that's very gentle. So from there, we're going to go into <coughs> OK Owinge, which at one time they were known as what? Yes. Oh, very good. OK Owinge. A little thicker pot. So we have combined much more of temper, usually the basalt, or whatever they find in that area. There's a huge deposit in Zia. And you use vegetal paint. Same reflection. Your sky cord. Life cord, if you will, because that's us. And then your earth cord. And it's also divided again, right in here, to represent the four directions. The four directions is also the, the, the nurturing of life, because we walk on that journey, all of us. I know I skipped on, on a few because we don't have a Laguna piece. Uh, Laguna, of course, uh, will actually share similarity with Acoma Pueblo, but they use more of a dingier white, meaning that they don't um, soak their clay a little longer than, than Acoma. So I jump into Picaris. Picaris will have used a lot of um, different uh, polychrome pots as well, but, and then again, with the disposition, where Picaris and Taos were as one at one time. Then again, with the different uh, in, in conflict, war, <coughs> invasion, we, 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 we differ our, our thoughts, so we divide. So within that region, there's a huge deposit 
of my caches. Huge. So the pueblos in that surrounding area will actually have used now just strictly my caches because it's easier to work with. And if you're a potter, this is 100% my, my caches. You don't have to add any temper to it. The firing method is easier. It's a clear oxidized firing. So in times where we have even fire clouds, right? Clouds. Back to moisture. Extremely important. Where pickeries claim to be that they have a thinner walls to be cooked in, utilitarian. They often badger towers that they make better pots. <laughs> Who knows? Or a towel will have a thicker um, vessel, but if it's done successfully in any firing, it'll have that healthy ring. It tells you a lot about that particular pot. There's no thickness or thinness. There's no hairline crack. There's no over or under firing. So from there, we're still looking at up north, where they all speak Tewa, this is Pawaki, and what they've done here is that they actually stone polished their ware, also back to utilitarian. And then sometimes back to the firing method. It's a clear oxidized firing where we allow the flame to touch the ware. Clouds. In this case will be black clouds, and black clouds are what again? Very good. So we jumped into San Aldofonso. And San Aldofonso, of course, uh, we all know about Maria, uh, the high stone polish. But even prior to that, their polychrome really looked different than what we see today. Because of the market itself, we want it to be a little more intricate, a little more development of our ideas and became really a, a, a tool to, to be sought after. Meaning that we high polish even more than before. We add a little more design, but the basic openness is still the same. You got your sky cord, which is often with a mixture of all the different pottery, and then we still have a feathered. The feathered, then again, we use birds, the bigger birds, hawk, eagle as a spiritual messenger for the upper gods. They're the only two that will go to the highest point. Where those smaller birds have other duties as well. So in this case we added them um, uh, Olowa. What does that mean again? Shemak Olowa. Right? So the same repeating pattern that we saw earlier is that is that that dagger that stands for the authority of that individual. If it, you see a medicine man, is he a spiritual man? Did he inherit the, the pueblo? But usually, a lot of the uh, San Aldefonso will will do um, a simple pot, but was functional. But then again, the basic of this is that if you actually divide this into fours, there's your line, and there's your line. See, it started to repeat itself. And then, here's the other line, and there's the other line for that four directions. Extremely important. How important it is, is that the rotation <coughs> of our surrounding reflects around the four directions. When to have ceremonies, when to have dances, when to actually uh, do offerings, when to celebrate, it's all very important. Now we go into Domaya. <coughs> very good, Santa Ana Pueblo. Luckily, they're, they're still potting, and their design itself is a little different from others. But then again, you start to see a lot of that same repeated pattern. Whereas like if you look this way and it's colored, is it black for male and white for female? Or is it Kiva steps? 
coming from the, the emergence, as they, the Pueblos believe that they have emerged from the underworld, and through their, their, their medicines, they come out and, and to seek already the cloud form, rain coming down. Or is it a pattern of a, of a squash? So it's interchangeable. It all becomes nomenclature. And then we walk into Santa Clara, one of the oldest of any, um, definitely really reflect on the bear paw. You've seen a lot of that uh, in different shops and such. Um, they pay homage to the bear, which at one time the Pueblos or Santa Clara wasn't doing very well as far as a, as a people and a nation. <coughs> and, and then again, uh, back to the warfare and conflict, interconflict, conflict uh, they notice that there's a healthy bear just being naughty. Healthy skin, it's alive and well, and here we are, the, the Santa Clarians are in, in, in a desperation. They followed the bear back <coughs> into the mountain and found an oasis. Save Santa Clara. And usually you'll find Bear paw, sometimes it's four claws or five claws. That is just to pay homage back to the bear. And not <laughs> often repeated in, in, in the rest of the pueblos. They made sure that the, the bear claw stays within Santa Clara. But in this case, the most popular of any design will be a vanu. And it's a carved in vanu, uh, as opposed to like, San Aldefonso will do a lot of the black on black. This is a car black, and we have an avanium that has lightning coming out of the mouth. And lightning precedes rain. Thunder precedes rain. Germination, pollination precedes rain. So it's a huge paramount of, of all this spiritual messaging with the upper gods. So in this case, how the priority of it is that it has a horn. Sometimes we use plume, feathered, to represent the priority of that avanian. It has to go all the way around, 360 degrees, and it ends with a tail right underneath. It has to balance. As a potter, we have to know about balance. Very, very important. So Ivanyu is also the guardian of rain. He sits in the area where if it's a, a lake, a pond, stream, brook, it will never run out. Back to having the moisture itself, dry farming is a huge paramount. Prayers are answered, a huge growth and, and crops and such. So we jump into Santo Domingo. In Santo Domingo, they call themselves Gewa, right? Gewa. Yeah. Try it, Gewa. Yeah. <coughs> and one of the more conservative Pueblo. Very, very conservative. And even their pot is very conservative. A lot of the Pueblos, they modified their design based on the market to get a little more intricate, different design. I implement my own. But with Santo Domingo, with Geiwa, hardly any changes. Very, very simple. But the same aspect about the division is still there. Here's your ceremonial break. Very important during the ceremonies. And then you got your upper cord, your sky cord for the heavens, the gods, and such. And then for us, plants, amphibians, four legged, two legged. And then finally the earth cord at the bottom. Beautiful ring. From being conservative, of course, now we jump into Taos. 
another micaceous, which is actually, and then again, a huge deposit. You don't have to pre prepare it as much. You just have to make it into a powder fine. Fire this particular piece, 15 to 30 minutes tops, depending on your, on your what type of wood you're using. But then again, same standard. It's a geometric pattern, whereas these look like cloud patterns sticking up. Well, does that mean it's chemo steps? So it's interchangeable. So if you actually put this upside down, and then the changes of, of the cloud reflects on the crown, and then your, your male <coughs> cloud. So it changes depending on who you talk to. Same standard is that we want a clear oxidized firing to touch the wear, and we want to also initiate the, the cloud pattern as simply clouds. Can't heavily emphasize more on how, how it rotates around the moisture. So from there, we go into Zia. Zia also is known as Zia, right? Zia. One of the smaller Pueblo, and within their region, they have a huge deposit of the basalt. The basalt mix probably half and half, depending on who you talk to. Even the method changes as well. And the most popular of any design came out of a Zia was the Zia Sun Symbol. <coughs> I'm not sure if you know, but they almost lost the rights to that. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <coughs> I don't understand that. <coughs> so the same tradition is continued, where in this case we actually put an antelope on. Antelope or the use of, an of animals, it's paramount. We use everything and nothing's wasted. It's a continued uh, tradition even today. We only take what we need. That's probably the, the, the best word of wisdom. We only take what we need. And from Zia, the same division, usually, you usually see a rain parrot or a parrot which will conflict with, uh, sometimes Akama will do a parrot, even Zuni will do a parrot. Who has the rights, who made the, 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 the first implementation of the parrot? And then again, it, it doesn't matter who you talk to. It's all about bringing and talking about spirituality. From Tzia, and finally, we got Zuni. Zuni Shiwina. This is not a traditional piece, however, but uh, I, like, I like this piece because it's in a, in a relief form of a salamander. Why salamander? And then again, the reflection whereas a lot of the amphibians are insects, they change color when moisture is coming. They change color when they celebrate. We like that kind of celebration. We, as human beings, we take that as it's a good sign. It's a good omen. Then again, going back to germination and pollination. The traditional piece is usually white. And the most popular design will be a deer in the house. A deer in the house to them is that there's a space surrounding the deer with a heart light motif. They believe that when they have emerged, they led them to the water. And then again, the whole initiative of our, our livelihood is about water. And that heart motif is to bring life, longevity, to the Pueblo nations and, and their way of life and their, and their traditions. And with this, the spirit of the salamander is to be released to the upper gods. So it becomes a mutual exchange. The pueblos will dance, pray, and sing as an exchange for moisture. Right? Anybody have any questions? Please, can you 
um, talk about a lot of the ancient pottery, like we have in the museum downstairs, has handles. Their cups, their jugs, and that doesn't seem to be done uh, to, by today's potters. Is there um, anything you can throw light on? Yeah, because of Tupperware, we don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know. After, and then again, before the invasion, and I say the invasion, I, there's actually a better word for that. But when pots and pans came in, there's no need for that. It was easier to replace a metal cup versus your cup that you make. Because you have to replaster, it will break, and it's just a lot of work. Even with the handles, as a potter, you have to be sure that the handle is part of the, uh, the horizontal <coughs> coil. If you develop a little air bubble, it's mm -hmm. going to pop a lot of work. So when, when, the, when pots and pans came in, it was just a lot easier to replace. Good enough? <laughs> Tupperware. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. Reference a couple of times in the different firing methods of the different pueblos. Uh -huh. Could you elaborate on what those firing methods are and maybe how they've changed over the years? It did change quite a bit. Yeah. It's easier now to use electric kiln versus an open kiln. <coughs> when we do a firing like this, so the type of method we're actually going to do is a we shield our vegetal paint from the flame. We put a shield to it. If you allow that flame to touch the wear on your mountain bee weed or your orchard, whatever the case you've been using, it's going to decarbonize, meaning it's going to burn right off. So when you put a shield around it, and using either, the, depending on your temperature, you can use cow manure, horse manure, and sheep manure. And cow manure is probably the best because it's a long temperature burning and it's a slow temperature burning. And we can reach in a Fahrenheit of 1,000 to 1,400 Fahrenheit. So it's quite hot, depending on your size. So, so back to Santa Clara, San Aldofonso, this is your reduction process. So we eliminated the circulating oxygen around it. We smothered with, with manure. What kind of manure? We're actually going to use cow and horse. So what we want to do is that when a flame comes up, see flame is oxygen. We don't want oxygen. We just want it to smoke. We're suffocating if that's the word for it. We throw more of horse manure on it to take out the fire. Otherwise, if you keep on fire using the, the rich oxygen, this black is actually going to burn off. It's going to decarbonize. When you finish with your pieces, when it seeks oxygen, it'll be in this color. It decarbonizes. From that reduction process here, there's a lot more flame around it. So it's a, it's a, it's a higher temperature burning. So your actual vegetal paint starts with brown, in most cases with your, your mountain bee weed. It'll turn into a darker, darker brown. Your orange, usually it's orchard. There's pink, there's red, and there's yellow. Depending on what you mix with, it'll turn into orange. Sometimes we can even use sandstone and turn powder fine. That's the crucial of any is that most of the your base clay has to be a powder fine and depending on your mixture, the thinner the vessel, uh, the less of your temper, the thicker the vessel, half and half of your temper in clay. Good enough? Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. So then they don't use dye from let's say the little um, animal, little insects and things like that. Oh, they do. Oh, they, do. they do. Even in pottery. Yes. But you got to be careful now. Um, a lot of the insect, um, like for instance, like uh, uh, what's that? Um, 
Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. Cochineo. Mexico. Yes. Cochineo, if you actually apply fire on it, it'll burn right off. It, it has to be a lower temperature burning like um, Hopi. Hopi will use a lot of um, um, sheet manure because it has a lower temperature burning. You got to be very careful on your what, what vegetal and mineral you use. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. So if it's like now, a lot of them either result to or start using micaceous because it's easier. 100% grind your powder fine, fire it 15, 20 minutes, you're done. Clear oxidized fire. Or we can actually result to the old green wear. Because there's a lot more time to put into it. And then sometimes a waiter at a restaurant makes more than a potter. <laughs> So it's, it's very, very important. Any more questions before we close it up? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I, I just wondered about the practice of, of uh, breaking a hole in the bottom of the pot. Mm. Uh, could you give a comment to that? When, when the Membrus culture practice a lot of that, where it's a, they call it a kill pot, and if one is deceased, you want the spirits to just it's a straight shot into the heavens. So they usually squat the, uh, the, the individual that passed on into a fetus position. So the spirit of the, of, of the body, with the, with the uh, for say this is a kill pot, and we, <coughs> we put a little circle to it, onto the head so that the, that the, the ancestors are waiting on the opposite side. It's a straight shot to the, to the heavens. Kill pot. Yes, sir. What was used for the fire before the old world animals were brought into the new world? I think when in the surrounding, cedar is probably the most popular. Cedar is the one that will cling, has a clean burn with less ash and soot. Whereas if you, act, if you start to use a lot of a cotton wood, oh man, it, it, you know, you, cottonwood, you can use this, but it's a lot of, it's sooty, so you don't want soot on it. <coughs> so manure comes in, it actually cleans, has a clean burn, if it, that makes sense. Whereas, like, if you use wood, it, it's very ashy. You don't want ash on your pot. No. Yes. Oh, yes, you. Uh, <laughs> the, the small black pot there, I noticed on the, the symbol there that had the circle, you know, the little winding, I think it's on that one. Or is it, yeah, there we go. Now, is that something, what does that represent, or is that something that came in after, after the fact? You mentioned about how some of that was okay. adapted. This, this particular symbol, and then again, if I ask five, five different people, five different answers, a lot of them feel that, that the whirlwind, the whirlwind? brings moisture, back to moisture. Some will say it's actually the unraveling of our umbilical cord. Some say it stands for solstice. Some say it's the merger from the underworld. So it's not a specific thing that you, you know, it's all of this is what it represents. It all changes. Uh, um, on the nomenclature of it. Okay, one more question, make a good one. <laughs> okay, way, way in the back, way in the back. This is not a question, but... Yes, I'm married. I'm married. <laughs> 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 I'm married. 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 And um, it was quite a, a family event. We would all go out in the back of the pickup truck, and our job was to collect cow patties. And of course, these cow patties were were old, you know. And so um, I just thought it was interesting. It just brought me back to my yeah. childhood. Yeah, the the type of manure that we use then and now is actually a separation, also. Uh, the the manure that we use today, it's all steroid driven, you know, protein driven. 
and your manure will change color. Whereas on the old manure, it's just basic organic. And back to Akome, when you come in, in the olden days, when you come into this world, you get washed with pottery. When you deceased, you also leave with pottery for your journey. Mm. Thank you.